stage two for GameSpot's E3 coverage. I am Cam, and I am um, joined here by Gavin. And Gavin is here to show us the puppeteer. But before we do that, I just want to remind you that this is stage two because there are, in fact, two stages, two live stages all the way through E3 by us, GameSpot, which is something I think quite spectacular. So on stage one right now, we've got Chris Waters showing off something, or it might even be Danny O'Dwyer. So many of us. But stage two is only stage two by name. We have got some of the best games on the show floor here at E3. And right now, this is one of my most anticipated. It's Puppeteer. So, Gavin, Hi. welcome to stage two. How are you, sir? I'm good. Having good. a really it's good show. Oh, great. What's, what's the best thing you've seen so far, apart from your own game? Uh, my own game. They've <laughs> kept me locked up uh, over there in the Sony booth talking to everybody. So they haven't let me out very much. OK. But not I even for to, like, food or uh, toilet breaks? No? get out there. Sorry? Okay. Not even for food or toilet breaks. You, I'm not joking you. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. In, that, they run a tight ship there. They do. Okay, well, I'm really glad you were allowed out to come and see me. I really appreciate that. No, no. Now, pleasure. gauging how much, you must, how much you must be enjoying the freedom. But um, let's actually have a look at Puppeteer, and you can tell us a little bit about it. We've got a live okay. demo for everyone watching at home right now. Okay. So um, explain to me, in a nutshell, what is Puppeteer? Well, Puppeteer basically is all set in a magical uh, theater run by a very nefarious man called Gregorius T. Oswald. And he's also your storyteller and narrator through the whole thing. Ah, okay. And uh, basically, uh, this theater is really unusual because instead of moving through the world like an ordinary platformer, the theater actually changes on you every five to 10 minutes. So you never know what's gonna come next. So you always want to keep playing. So when you say the theater changes, what do you mean? Can you the actual sets will all rotate, spin out, Revolve. You can see them moving at the moment. Okay. They actually, you know, cause me difficulties in this uh, actual ride section of the game. So is that dictated <coughs> by your progress through the game, or if you were to stand still, would that still happen? <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, in other sections of the game, you can. But what we what we decided to do was make something where you would never see the same thing twice. Okay. And that was really important to us. So we, we couldn't work out how to do that. I mean, how do you do that in a game? Never see the same thing twice, right? That's tough. And how would you make everything change every five to 10 um, minutes? And then we hit upon the idea of the theater because it, with this, mm. we actually have a set. Yeah. And we can change the way it moves. We can rotate it. We can make it scroll across, you know, using, you know, cogs and things. <coughs> And we have loads of different ways that the set changes, but we also have a huge variety in this game. As I said, we never show things twice. So my team hates me. It means they have to make everything fresh <laughs> every five to 10 minutes. Um, so basically, uh, I've had to like buy them lots of pizza and beer all the time to, sure. to get on with them. I can imagine. Now, it's, it, you mentioned this all, you're kind of, um Inspiration for this is the theater, yeah. and you've, it, this game has things like um, you know, kind of audience reaction and things. But in yeah. so, do, so when you kind of hit on that theater idea, what other type of you know, tropes of the theater have you thrown in there? Well, Am really, I gonna be able to sing along? You, 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 you oh, know? there may be a section. I'm not giving too much away, but there <laughs> may be a section where you might be able to sing along. That, that appeals to me. <laughs> but then, um, yeah, as you mentioned, the audience. The audience is great. Um, that I put in completely selfishly because I'd work late, go home, play the game. And then I'd clear a level or beat a boss and I'd look around and my son had gone to bed. So it was like, I need somebody to cheer me on. So okay. as you play puppeteer and you, and you succeed, then actually the, uh, you know, the audience will get into what you're doing, start clapping and cheering you on. We have a full lighting rig, theater lighting rig, volumetric lights. We have uh, fog machines, basically it'll blow fog across the stage and everything. <coughs> and we actually call our characters a cast. Okay. Because they're playing characters, so they have their own personalities. Mm -hmm. And the game's very Monty Python-like, so as you mm. progress through the game, the characters start breaking the fourth wall, and okay. um, they start talking to the audience and uh, having little fights with each other, you know, having dig at the, the narrator and what he's saying and stuff. So it's a very unusual it's experience. It's almost Virgie's on kind of panto at times, is it? Yeah, yeah. it is. And that's actually a very good uh, example, you know. We're both, you know, Englishmen, and that, you know, we. Well, I'm a Scotsman, up, but I, you know, oh, a Scotsman, then. I'm sorry, British. I'll take that. Yeah. British. Uh, <laughs> not to offend anyone out there. <laughs> um, and so, 
you know, it, that sort of thing, that sort of reactions from the yeah. audience as yeah. well, and reacting with the audience is, is pretty cool. awesome. Well, what we're watching now, we're watching this little guy, he looks like a puppet, he's got a, what well, appears to be a house for a head. Yeah, I've got a house a for a head. Of, wielding a pair of scissors. Can yeah. you explain a bit of the backstory? Like, okay. Who are we and why do we have a house for a head? Okay. Basically, uh, this is a dark fairy tale. So it's very much um, Terry Gilliam or Tim Burton yeah, in that can, sense. You can see that, yeah. Um, and our poor hero here, uh, he was basically stolen away from the earth to the moon by the moon bear king. Who's, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, happens all the time. <laughs> and um, he's basically, his soul is stuffed into the body of a wooden puppet and he's sent off to be a slave in the kitchens. But he displeases the king, so the king rips his head off and eats it and then throws him away, discards him. Wow. Now there's a witch that works in the kitchens, Esma Potts, and she has a very lazy flying cat called Ying Yang, and she's basically wanting to get this pair of magic scissors from the Moon Bear King. Okay. Because they're the m most powerful thing on the moon. Right. So she's using these poor children, basically, sending them off on this death-defying trip to get these scissors, and none of them come back. And unfortunately, she sends off our hero here, Kutaro, and he actually manages to get the scissors because he has this ability with his head. Mm. And because he has no head, he is, he's able to pick up different heads and they act as your life, okay? Right. You get hit, your head will fall off, right? And roll around for three seconds, right? And that three seconds is the food rule. You know when you drop your toast? Yeah, yeah, and I you do get, it all the time. Yeah, and then, you know, you get away with that. Your mum like goes, okay, that's good enough. So they're your life. Okay. And you can have three at once. And so if you can pick it up in three seconds, you don't actually die. You, get, right. you can retain your life. All right, so let me just get this straight. So we're a, a soul trapped inside a headless puppet who finds heads and who's got a pair of magic scissors on the moon. Now, were you entirely sober when you came up with this um, idea? I might not have been. Might not have been. Because that, is, that, um, is, that is outrageous, but um, fantastic. Really uh, fantastical. Yeah. I guess that was, that's a very deliberate move. And you mentioned the kind of Tim Burton-esque uh, influences here. So... And what's going on here? You you can. What are you using to attach I'm, to I, that? I'm. Uh, there are four hero heads as well. Okay. So these they're, these ordinary life heads. There are a hundred of those to find, and each of those, those has a, an individual power. Right. That you can use at one point in the game, either to defeat a boss or open a bonus stage, for instance. Mm -hmm. But there are four hero heads, and those heads are basically uh, the four heroes of the moon who rose up against the Moon Bear King, ah, okay. but were pathetic in their revolution right. and were basically decimated and their heads were scattered across the moon. So as you go on your wacky wild adventure, you find uh, these heads. And then you so, can get their power, right? Yeah. And you use them. Okay, interesting. So, so the first would be this knight, so I can guard with this, right? So I just lost my head there, so I've got three seconds to bring it, it back it, and get back it. my nice. life. Then I, I've got a bomb here, my ninja head, and I need to blow this up, so I'm going to use that. Okay. So you, okay. you can switch heads on the fly, as it were. Yeah, they're yeah. assigned to okay. buttons. Oh, so okay. it's really cool. So I'm going to go up here, cut up all this smoke, and I'm going to use my wrestler head and smash down on this and break it. Wow. And you saw me using my pirate head before. Yeah. The hook. And I can grab onto things with that. Now, those heads and the scissors are not just for battle. Okay. They're, they're incredibly important to use as a way of navigating your way through the game. So, for instance, that wrestler head... Because we're on a set, on stage, I can actually physically move the stage around to solve oh, wow. puzzles. And then with this hook, I can grab hold of objects and actually ping them backwards and forwards to fire up smoke like this or different things. So they have to be used in conjunction throughout the game. Right, okay. So does that mean, as a result, there's kind of multiple ways of getting past bits, or is there like precise heads you have to use at precise times? Um, it's both. It's your choice. Sometimes okay. they're going to be, you're going to have to do things like I'm doing now. I'm being forced to use these heads in conjunction, mm -hmm. use the bomb, cut up, then use the wrestler, for instance. To, and I'm, I'm just annoying this dragon more and more and more. <laughs> um, but, you know... It's up to you. There are points in the game where you have to decide what to do, whether you want to cut up somewhere and find out what's yeah. up there or what's not up there. So um, you can use these scissors. They seem to be really useful as a way of kind of getting around more than anything else, right? Yeah, is, is, that one of the, is that what makes them magic? Yeah. Okay. Basically. Plus they have the ability to cut through mostly anything. That is useful. Yeah. I'd like them. That would be very <laughs> useful. Uh, and so who, also, who's the kind of little fairy chap or chapette okay. around? Um, 
we have two sidekicks in the game. All right. The first one is the cat I talked about. Yeah, Yin Yang, right? Yin Yang. He's your first helper, but he's incredibly lazy and doesn't want to go on this adventure with you. So after you escape the uh, Black Castle of the Moon Bear King and set off on your real adventure, um, you get joined by this character who's called Picarina. Okay. And she's basically the daughter of the sun who's transformed into this character by the Moon Bear King. Ah, I see, I see. And she's incredibly annoying. Okay. But what's really interesting is I can control her on the right stick like this. All oh, right, so she's not an AI sidekick. No, and then I can I can then like click around with her, and I'm going to open his mouth, and I got a I got a new head there. I got the dragon, dragon head. head. So how many heads are there? There are a hundred. A hundred, a hundred heads. Yeah, hundred heads. Wow. Okay, that's so, that's a lot. That's serious. a lot to collect. So if you play this one player, right, you can click around the backgrounds and find different things. Yeah. And and most of the background in Puppeteer is completely interactable. Okay. Okay. So. You know, as I said, my team are annoyed with me because we change everything five minutes. So slow down a bit and search around a bit, guys, and let my team be a little bit happier that you see their beautiful things that they've made. Okay, that is a very beautiful dragon. You can tell them <laughs> I said is. that. That looks gorgeous. So, but obviously, we, it, it's a platform game, so we do have two player. But that's something we're going to talk about later. Okay, so that was, that was going to be my next question, actually. Yeah. In my mind. Uh, okay, but you, so you're not, you not, can't really talk too much about that just now. Okay. Mm. So I'm just, I'm just getting kind of drawn in by this. Uh, yeah, it's one of it's one of those here. games, isn't it? I just got fried as well because I was kind of. Oh, so that right. So you were meant to be doing. I, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna probably blame myself for that one. I did kind of distract you. So who is this dragon? What's what's his deal? Why is he? He's why is one he so of the angry? generals of the Moon Bear King. Okay. And um, basically, he, we have a lot of bosses in our game. Right. We have 13 major boss battles. 13. And every single one of those boss battles is different. So. And they're basically all the uh, generals of the Moon Bear King, and then obviously the Moon Bear King himself. I'm getting almost uh, from this brief glimpse of this boss fight, almost yeah. a, a God of War esque vibe, yeah, and it, how it's you fight. God them. of War meets theatre. All oh, right, okay. See, I'm being distracted. Yeah, as well. just, I'm just throwing these <coughs> points at you. Oh, I'm sorry. Make it, well, it's just showing your game is not easy, right? It's yeah. not easy. It's not easy when there's a Scotsman distracting you. It is. Yeah. It's true. <coughs> so you're putting your scissors on fire there. So your scissors have a number of yeah. You see those scissors? They they obviously can cut through different things, but you can power them up. Okay. And once you power them up, it means you can cut longer and faster. Normally you can just cut a little bit. I won't distract you this time. I'll let you nail him this time. But we're incredibly varied, and we really do urge people to. Go out there and, and pick up a copy. We're out really soon. When, when exactly? We're out September the 10th. September the 10th. Wow, so yeah. not long after E3 at all. No. So if you're at E3 right now and also somehow live streaming this, which might be a few strange people, um, can you actually play the puppeteer right. at E3? Right. Walk onto the Sony booths. We have uh, four setups up there. We have another two, uh, both on both of the platforms as well. Um, it, we have two demos. So we don't okay. just have this demo as well. We have a, another completely different demo which tells you the opening story and everything, which is much more platformy okay. rather than fast paced like this. Yeah, so this, okay, so this looks like not the beginning of the game. Like no. It's challenging. It's quite right. challenging, you know, like, especially when I'm distracting you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm really annoying him now. So I think I think we're showing people too much, don't you? No, I don't no. know. I mean, if, you, just for if game this is spot, all you've got, we should take him out. Okay, good, good plan. Do it for game spot. And see, no, no, no. And it's absolutely seamless. You can see how the scenes change yeah. and everything. It's gorgeous. Everything pops in and moves. We don't load at all. So once you're in the game, you're in the game. You can just stay in there and enjoy this kind of crazy, fantastical, weird, eccentric world we've created. Now, now what I'm interested about, actually, is there seems to almost have been in the, in the last few years, maybe it's just in my mind, but a resurgence of really quality 2D platformers. You know, like we've got Rayman Legends, Rayman Origins. Yeah. Well, Rayman Origins look fantastic. We've yeah. got um, Puppeteer, and then we had Little Big Planet before. I mean, so what were your kind of influences in a kind of mechanical way? Because getting the mechanics of platforming is kind of do yeah, or that, die. that is the essentials of, of, of a platform game. Yeah. So and where did you take your leads from? Well, it's really interesting. I mean, I've been playing platform games for, you know, well, I'm 43 years old, so ever since they've been out, basically. 
And obviously, the one that has always kicked it has been Mario. Yeah. I mean, that's so super good on the D-pad, and it, uh, the jump's so cool. It just, it's, hard to, it's hard to quantify, but it just feels right. Right, yeah. It? Yeah, yeah. And it's the language of gaming, right? Platform games. Mm -hmm. You can tell, ask anybody, you can give anybody a platform game and they can play it, because all it is is pushing left and right and pressing jump. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows it, so it's, it's, a, it's our language, you know. And we spent a long time working on these mechanics mm -hmm. and redefining and chipping away I mean, I think the jump alone took over a year to get right to the way we wanted it because, wow. because of the speed of the character, the way the sets change and how far you have to jump and that you're not allowed to go too far with the jump because you have to use the scissors to get to different places because of the cut mechanic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, and then we spent a long time refining that. We had one guy just working. Wow. On, Jesus, one on, guy for a year yeah, on jump. One programmer and then one animator making sure that it, it frame, like this frame, take this frame out. He must have got some strange looks if he went to a party and was like, right. what do you do? Well, you oh, do. well, I've been working last year at, on how to jump. Jump. Like, well, okay. That's... How to move this character around. Wow, there you go. Well, um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on stage and showing us um, a whole new demo of the puppeteer. I really appreciate no, you coming on, thank you on, very Gavin. much for letting me be here. Okay, well, guys, um, just to let everyone know, if they have liked what they've seen and they're interested in picking up the puppeteer, when can they and on what platforms? Okay, it's for PS3. Mm -hmm. We're out on September the 10th. It's Blu-ray disc and PSN. If you pre-order, you get the wonderful soundtrack by Patrick Doyle. Okay. Patrick has written, written 70 pieces of music for you, right, in this game. They're not all on the soundtrack, by the way. Okay. Okay? Uh, Patrick used to be the uh, head of uh, the Royal Shakespeare Company. For oh, wow. Okay. Musical so director. he's got a theater past there. Theater background, but yeah. he also wrote the music for Carlito's Way um, and Pixar movies. Absolutely stunning. So Great. pick it up, pre-order it. Get that wonderful soundtrack, September the 10th, bargain price, $39.99. Oh my God. <laughs> 12 plus hours of gameplay in there for you. Okay. And Brilliant. it's something special and new, and we hope you really enjoy it. Excellent. Well, Gavin, it's been a pleasure having no. you on stage. Thank you very much. Thank you very and much. And for you watching at home, make sure you stay tuned to stage two. We'll be back again in about five minutes with one more time with myself, and we're going to be looking at Black Guards, so don't go anywhere.